Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part one of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll understand what ASP.NET is, what a web application is, alternative technologies that can be used to build web applications, advantages of using web applications, and finally, how ASP.NET web applications actually work. So what's ASP.NET? ASP.NET is a web application framework developed by Microsoft to build dynamic data-driven web applications and web services. What are web services and how to actually build web services, we will worry about them in a later session. But for now, understand that ASP.NET is a framework you know, that's used to build web applications and web services. In fact, ASP.NET is actually a subset of the wider .NET framework. Now, .NET framework can be used to do a variety of things. For example, I can build different types of applications using .NET framework. I can build console applications, web applications, Windows applications, Windows services, etc. So, ASP.NET is a subset of that wider .NET framework that can actually be used to build web applications and web services. Now, if you're wondering what a framework is, a framework is nothing more than a collection of classes, if we have to put it in simple terms. Now, we know that ASP.NET is a subset of the .NET framework that can be used to build web applications and web services. Now, along the same lines, we have something else called ADO.NET. Now, ADO.NET, is that a different technology altogether? No, again, ADO.NET is a subset of the wider .NET framework that can actually be used to pull data from different databases and then serve it up to a console application or a web application or a Windows application, whatever. So any type of application that you build, if at all, if you want to retrieve data from data sources and then use the data within your application, then you will use something called ADO.NET. Again, ADO.NET is not a different technology altogether. It is a subset of the .NET framework that can be used to pull data and then use that with your application. Along the same lines, ASP.NET is a subset of the .NET framework that can be used to build web applications and web services. Now, ASP.NET is introduced in the year 2002 with .NET Framework 1.0. Now, so were we using any of the Microsoft technology before the year 2002 to build web applications? Absolutely. So that technology is called as classic ASP, Active Server Pages. Now, prior to .NET, prior to ASP.NET, we were using classic ASP, okay? But then, there are several advantages of using ASP.NET over classic ASP to build web applications, which we will be talking about in a later session. So, what's a web application? A web application is an application that is accessed by users using a web browser. For example, you know, to search something on the internet, I fire up a browser and then I type in google.com. So google.com, for example, is a web application. Or I want to do some internet banking and I, I fire up a browser, I type in barclays.co.uk, meaning Barclays is a web application there. So any application that is typically accessed by using a web browser is called as a web application. And examples of browsers include Internet Explorer from Microsoft, Chrome from Google, Firefox from Mozilla, Safari from Apple, Navigator from Netscape. So is ASP.NET the only technology available to build web applications? No. There are alternative technologies as well, which of you know some of them include PHP, Java, CGI, Ruby on Rails, Perl, and there are many others as well, which we have not listed here. So what are the advantages of using web applications over traditional desktop applications? Now, if you're looking for examples of desktop applications, Microsoft Office is a classic example. So what are the advantages of using web applications over these desktop applications? Now, the first advantage is web applications just need to be installed only on the web server, whereas desktop applications need to be installed on every computer where you want to access them. Okay, let's take an example. Now, let's say in my organization I have 50,000 employees and I want every employee to be able to access Microsoft Office. If that's the case, then I will have to have this Microsoft Office installed on each and every computer. So 50,000 computers, just imagine how much time and effort is it going to take to install a software on 50,000 computers. 
But whereas, if it's a web application, you don't have to install that on all the 50,000 computers. All you do is install that on a web server. And then how will your users access that application? Fire up the browser and then type in the URL of the application. And you are able to access that application there. So similarly, I mean, if you want to access Google web application, you don't have to literally install that application on your machine. On, on a client machine, all you need is a browser that can understand HTML. As long as you have that browser, you can access that web application. Okay, and another advantage obviously is maintenance support and patches are easier to provide. For example, let's say there is a bug in the application. If it's a desktop application, so typically you fix that bug, and then if you want that bug to be, you know, resolved on each and every computer, obviously that patch has to be applied again on all the 50,000 computers. Just Again, imagine how much time and effort is that going to take. Whereas, if it's a web application, you just apply that patch on the web server. And all your users who then fires up their browser points the URL to the application, you know, will now have that upgraded or patched application. So maintenance, support, and patches are easier to provide for web applications than to desktop applications. And on the client machine, you only require a browser that can understand HTML. You don't need to install any other software. And web applications, obviously, they are accessible from anywhere provided there is an internet. Okay, so I can access, for example, google.com from my office, from my home, wherever, provided there has to be internet, obviously. And another greatest advantage is the cross-platform. Meaning, if, if I am developing Microsoft Office on a Windows platform, then I can only run that Microsoft Office on a Windows operating system. If I try to run it on any other operating system, like Mac OS or any other operating system, it fails to run. But whereas web applications, as long as on that platform, you have a browser that can understand HTML, then you are able to access that. So it's accessible from cross-platform. All right, now let us see, you know, what is the architecture of a web application and how actually web applications work. Now, if you look at the diagram here, we have different clients, users, and then I have a server here, which has the web application. Okay, now if I want these three users to be able to access that web application, I don't have to install anything on these client machines. On these client machines, all I need is a browser that can understand HTML. And I install the web application on the web server. Now, if it's an ASP.NET web application, on the web server, you install something called IAS, Internet Information Services, which we'll be talking about in a later session. So IAS is basically used to host Microsoft ASP.NET web applications. So ASP.NET web applications run under IAS. Okay, so whenever I open a browser like this, I type in URL google.com and then when I press enter, what's going to happen, the request goes via the internet using a protocol called HTTP. HTTP standing for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So if you look at this, I actually use in the URL HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. That's how the you know the full URL is okay HTTP colon four slash four slash World Wide Web www dot the name of the application you know the URL google.com so what's going to happen we are using this HTTP protocol HTTP standing for hypertext transfer protocol now if you're wondering what a protocol is a protocol is nothing but a set of standard rules that you know describe how two or more items communicate over the internet. So we are using the HTTP protocol to access this application over the internet. And then the request goes to the IIS. Okay? IIS will then, you know, process the request. It will do whatever it has to do. If it has to go and retrieve, you know, uh, the data from a database, IIS will hand over that request to the web application DLL. If you are not sure what a web application DLL is, don't worry about that. We'll be looking about, you know, into that in a great detail in a later session. And then the web application goes to the 
web you know database server retrieves the data process the request and then generates the HTML gives it back to the IIS IIS will then return that back to the client who actually requested that page okay so basically if you look at this web applications use a client server architecture on the client all you need is a browser on the server you install web application you know web applications are hosted using IIS okay and then when you make a request you make that using a browser using the protocol HTTP that gets transmitted across the internet to the web server which receives the request hands the request over to the web application which will process the request generate the HTML and then gives it back to the IIS IIS will then return that HTML back to the client who initially requested that and we know that a browser can understand HTML the browser will interpret that HTML you know and shows that to the user keep in mind we know that we can use different technologies to build web applications okay PHP Java CGI etc but remember a browser that a user is using to access the web application can only understand HTML now I don't care what your web application is doing or which technology you have used to build that web application. At the end of the day, the web application has to emit HTML that can be understood by the browser. Okay, so when that HTML is received by the client browser, you know, the browser can interpret that HTML and displace that to the user. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.